Jack and I are gonna make a video for you today all about painting, huh Jack? What kind of paintbrush do you have? Um, zebra. It's a zebra brush, and what color is this? Yellow. It's Queen Bee? Yeah. And then White Swan? Yeah. So we're gonna show you how to take two colors and make an ombre paint finish with a little drippy blending in between. Mm -hmm. DIY paint because it's all natural and no VOC, Why? so it's totally safe Why for Jack to use. You, you dip it right here. Just a li little bit, not too much. You gotta wipe that off. Okay. There you go. Now you're gonna paint this part of the chair on the bottom, Jack. It's clay based, it's got really great coverage, and we're gonna paint the whole bottom in Queen Bee, and then we'll paint the top part in White Swan, and then we'll blend them. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. You're gonna go up and down like I'm doing. Good job. You're a good little painter. I want paint. Okay, dip it again. Hey, you just got you just got one on my knee. Well, there's no paint on your knee. No, you, you like? got a little bit on my knee. I just saw some. Just a little bit. Do you like painting, Jack? Yeah. What's your favorite part about painting? About about stretching it. You like to what? Well, extra. You, oh, you like distressing it, Jack? Yeah. Distressing's pretty good. For the middle color, I'm going to mix white swan. It's going to be about three parts white swan to one part of the queen bee. It doesn't take much. All right, I'm just taking a leftover fork and I'm mixing these two colors together. You could just go ahead and use a different, totally different color yellow like our cake batter. Um, but this way you only have to use two colors. I think that it needs a little bit more of the queen bee. You have to be careful because it's not like a 50-50 mix. This color is good. So when you're doing ombre, or at least when I do ombre, there's like a million different ways to do it. I like to squirt down where I'm going to be overlapping. I'm going to squirt this whole area to about here so I can blend this paint together and then I'll paint the top of here and I'll come up this far and then I'll switch brushes, paint my white and then mix that down into this middle color. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the brush. I didn't even wash it and I'm coming down, mixing together these colors. Okay, once I've got them mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and squirt it again and really just blend those colors together. So I'm just brushing this part here and I'm gonna paint this medium color up to about here. It's gonna take two coats to fully cover and then once that dries then I'm going to start on this top part with the white swan. All right, so here there's like it's not blended very well, so I'm coming back through without washing my brush and dipping it back in the queen bee and just kind of blending the two colors where they meet. I'm doing the same thing on this bar where they meet and I'm coming up here to like this side part on the chair. And that's the trick with getting a smoother ombre finish is really just coming back with each color and overlapping. So you can definitely see the difference between the front. You can definitely see where one color and the other color meet together versus the back here. So I'm gonna come back through, squirt it, dip into the queen bee, start at the bottom and then kind of work my way up and it's kind of bringing it up here. So while this, the middle coat, the first part of that is drying, I'm gonna do my white and come down to my mixed yellow with this white and then I'll come back with my other brush and do my second coat on the lighter yellow. 
I am using a different brush with this because I don't want to contaminate my white. Although I probably will get in a little contamination. <laughs> I just want this part up here to be super white, so I, I don't want any yellow in it. So now that I've got this looking like a candy corn, I think I'm gonna probably at least do some white wax on it and maybe some dark wax because I'm gonna to need to give it some definition. I'm coming back through and I'm second coating this part of the middle. We'll just call it the medium yellow. And I'm coming back up to the white that's actually, it's drying off a little. I'm just gonna wet it in the middle. The okay. white was still a little wet, but I'm gonna wet it just to help blend it a little better. You kind of have to work somewhat fast while the paint is wet. Otherwise you're gonna be squirting it a ton because that's the only way to really get it to blend. All right, now that I've done that, now I'm gonna come back through with my white brush. I'm gonna squirt from the top and I'm gonna work in sections to this white part because I feel like it's gonna be the trickiest. I'm gonna come down into here and mix these colors. It's gonna slightly contaminate it. So you might wanna pour your white into something else, but you gotta really blend them down or else you can't do what you want. I'm coming through here, let me squirt this to get it wet. Okay, I'm coming through here with my white to like second coat it. And then I'm coming back with my medium brush and I'm blending the middle line. Coming back with my white, coming back with my medium brush, coming back with my white. And you can see that that just kind of blends it and then I'm gonna squirt it. And it's gonna soften that blend. So the key is you don't want like one fine line where you go from one color to the other. So it's all about blending and dipping and squirting with the water bottle till you get a look that's right. And when it's all dry, if you still don't think it's right, you can reactivate the paint by squirting it and then do a little bit more blending. But in my effect, I'm also going to be distressing and then I'm gonna come back with a white wax and that'll kind of help blend everything together as well. All right, so I got this squeegee that I used at Debbie's house, it's by Mod Podge. I'm gonna come down through the paint and I'm going to just squeegee it off. And then put it back on the where I'm squeegeeing. And it's okay, don't freak out if it starts dripping everywhere. So that's kind of the point. And then I'm gonna come up here and squeegee and blend some of these colors. It was a little too wet and I didn't like the lines. So if you don't like where you squeegeed, you can just come back with your brush and kind of smooth it out and then come back and squeegee again. And it will lay flat once, once it starts drying. And I might come back here and add some more paint. I'm building up texture with the squeegee. You can see that, like I'm coming back with the paint and as it's kind of dry, I'm just kind of pushing it, mushing it back on there. So we are sanding this. This chair? Yes. All right, get to sanding. You go on that side. Okay, so we're just using 220. He's got a block, I've got sandpaper. And I'm just smoothing it out and giving a little bit of a smoother finish. You could leave all the texture on there, but I'm not a big fan. So I'm gonna smooth it all out and then we'll remove the dust and we'll be ready for white wax and clear wax. Yeah, that's all. Oh, there's yellow coming on it. All right, you could just seal it with clear wax, but I'm wanting to soften it just a little bit because my vibe in my shop is really French country. So I'm just taking this white wax and I have not cleared wax this. Sometimes I clear wax then do the decorative, but I really want to tone this down. So I've got my white wax and I'm using a separate container because as much as I'd like to think I removed all the sanding dust, I'm sure there's still some bright yellow sanding dust floating around. 
So this helps limit contamination so that way my white wax doesn't turn to pale yellow wax. I'm using my Paint Pixie Wax Brush. All the paint and wax that we've used today you can get at jamierayvintage.com as well as the Paint Pixie Brush and the paint brushes we used today. So for this look, I don't really want to have a ton of white, so I'm not waiting for it to dry. I'm just coming, as soon as I'm done white waxing the whole piece, I'm coming back with a lint-free cloth, and I'm just going to rub it back, so that way it's just sticking down in the cracks. So we are using DIY clear wax. We actually have a complete video on how to wax furniture, not just this project. I'll have the link put above, so that way you can learn all the ins and outs of how to use DIY wax. Jack's gonna help me finish this off. Can you get the wax on there, Jack? Oh, it, good job. No, that's the white wax. No, there's regular wax. Here, I put regular wax in here, let me show you. I'll put that on there. Okay, now put it on. There's a little white wax on there too. It's okay, I didn't wash my brush. All right, get it all over. It's your turn, Mom. It's my turn? Mm -hmm. All right. Jack, what was your favorite thing to do on the chair? Painting it. Painting it? You like painting it the yellow color? Mm -hmm. You were such a good helper. So we used Queen Bee, White Swan, White Wax, Clear Wax, the Paint Pixie Wax Brush, the Paint Pixie Paint Brush, as well as Jack used the Zebra Brush. You can purchase all those things at jamierayvintage.com. If you're watching this video and you're like, mm, I don't really like all the super heavy distress, if you skip the squeegee step and do a little bit less in the squirt bottle, you can get a really soft ombre. I wanted a really original, chippy, old looking effect, so that's what we did. Don't forget to hit the notifications button, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.